Hello, this is now for the second part of uh, lab four, where we want to go from the four digit LED display to an eight by eight matrix display instead. And uh, the dot matrix display you will find in your project boxes where you found everything else as well. Some students didn't find it and that was because it landed upside down. So there's something square in there. And how does it look? Let's get it and show it to you. Um, this is actually the display which we will be connecting. Like the other display it has a number down here and on this side it doesn't have anything and like the other display it has 16 pins on the lower side. But these are of course in a complete different order than they were for the other display. So some students now started to rip everything off our board which we had connected there from the first part. But this is not necessary. Um, because we will use a quite similar connection. So the only thing which we need to do is to take off this display here, put it to the side, take out the green wires in my case here, which connected through the resistors to port D, but I leave them in here on, on this side. And these blue wires here were the four wires from the port B, which we have been using so far. So now we will need four more wires. And I'll take four more blue ones for the other port wires. So let's have a look at the instructions and what they told us to do. Um, So we have we, we can first have a look at the suggested suggested construction here. So we have our matrix display where we had the other display before, and you see here we have white wires and blue wires. I will have uh, green wires and blue wires now. Um, but yes. We, we want to know what we should connect to what and there we have this graph or figure in the instructions which shows our LED matrix with its internal connection and then the pin numbering from 1 to 8 on one side and 9 to 16 on the other side and then to which pin of the microcontroller these wires should go. So if we start with the upper half here, we see that we want PB3 to go to the first pin on the upper row, then PB2 to the second, PB1, PB0, and then comes PD3 through its resistor PD2, PD1, PD0. Okay, let's try that. Um, so we, these are the wires which we already have connected. So this one here is PB0, PB1. PB2 and PB3. This one is our display, which I will put in here, let's say. And PB3 is to go is supposed to go to the first pin on the chip, which is actually directly on top of the first column of the LEDs, because the, there's actually one column per per pin and it actually matches. The next one, the PB2, goes to the next pin and then comes PB1 and then comes PB0. So these were the three first, uh, the four first wires on this side. Now comes PB3, PB2, PB1 and PB0. And these come from the resistors. So we have a look. And we started with PB0 from the left of our resistors. So the leftmost resistor was connected to PD0. So this one here is PD0, which goes to the rightmost pin on the LED. 
matrix, then comes the next, then comes the next, and then comes the next. Like this. So one half of the connections is done. And uh, now let's have a look how it's supposed to be at the lower half of the display. And there we have PD7 to PD4 before we come to our new wires which are connected to PB7, PB6, PB4, and PB5 and PB4. So PD7 would be the leftmost wire from our resistors and that goes into the first pin on the lower side of our display here. Then comes the next one and the next one and the next one and we are three quarters done with the wiring of the second project. So now we have to take these additional four wires and connect them appropriately. So I put this one in here. I put it into this pin on the display and that would then be PB7. So let's have a look where PB7 is found. We scroll back to the uh, instructions and PB7 is here on pin 10. So it's between the ground pin and the D5 pin, which is already used on our microcontroller. So if we look, we can see that we actually have two unused pins here in the middle. And this one would be the right one of these two unused pins. And the next one here would be the left one of this pair. And now I'm actually seeing that I might run into trouble with the length of these cables. So this cable here is a bit, little bit longer. I will swap this cable for this shorter blue cable. Like this. And that will hopefully do it because the next one here now is supposed to be going to PB5 which is up here so next to the AVCC pin it's actually our SCK pin so this pin is already used but uh, we can use it twice we actually have used PB3 which is also connected to MOSI already for a second purpose so we take it from here all the way over here and then we have one empty spot left on this side which goes to the last pin on this side and this cable was long enough so probably it would have been the other one would have been long enough as well and uh, that was the wiring of this project so let's connect our programmer again to the USB and we see a steady but weird display here. Um, it could look like some kind of alien language or I don't know what, but what it is is actually the individual bits of our binary numbers here. So if we compare this to our font from before, our seven segment font and this code is still running in the microcontroller then we can see that we are outputting a 0b0011111 on the first row we are outputting 0b12345 zeros one two three four five zeros two ones and a zero we are outputting 0B01, 01011, 0, 1, 1. And in the last row, we are outputting 0B0100, 0100, and then four ones. 
We could uh, calculate what these are in hexadecimal by actually looking at the two four bit halves of it. So this would be 3f, this would be 06, this would be 5, and then we have 8 plus 3, which is 11, which is b in hexadecimal, and we have 4f in the lowest row here. And uh, if we look at the 4f from the lowest row here, then actually this is exactly what we have done in the first part, where we actually looked at what 4f meant for our display, and this was in number 3 on our 7 segment display. But now it is just 1s and zeros. So we want now to actually show something more interesting or yeah, different on our display here. And uh, for that actually in the instructions, on the last page of the instructions, you will see how I developed the necessary data for a font showing the first or, yeah, the, the, the characters which we need to count uh, in hexadecimal. So we have the 0 to 9 here, and then we have A, B, C, D, E, F. That's all what we need for counting in hexadecimal. And here you can actually see how these individual bits are calculated then into a hex number, which is much shorter to write than a binary number and it's much less likely that you miscalculate the, the zeros and ones when you just write them as hexadecimal numbers. Here it is in the lab instructions. We have the same thing here as well on Studium. We can right click and copy it and we go to our code. In our code we have uh, still from before the previous previously font previously defined font here I will overwrite it with this new font for the dot matrix display it's a double indexed array we have 16 characters and each character is made up by 8 bytes describing the 8 rows of the display and uh, we we still don't know don't use a frame buffer for now and uh, we will keep this uh, current digit i will rename it to current row to make it a bit more clear what it does so now it will actually tell us which row is supposed to be displayed and i will quickly change it in all the places where it occurs But now we have eight rows and not uh, only four row, four digits. So we want to keep the index here, our global variable between zero and seven. And we can do this by actually dividing and taking the, the remainder, dividing by eight. Then we also have to decide on one character to show because it has two indices and I'll pick the number seven here like this and uh, what else do we have to do we have to make the additional four pins which we are now connected on port b output pins by replacing these four zeros with four ones and I want to start with a lower repetition frequency of the display by actually choosing this setting for our clock prescaler. If we go back to the instructions and to the table describing our microcontroller's timer, then we see that 101 is the highest prescaler, the divide by 1024 prescaler. So we're now taking 1 MHz of clock frequency divided by 1024, which is 977 or almost 1 kilohertz. And with this frequency, we are now counting from 0 to 255. So it takes us one fourth of a second roughly to do so. 
So every two seconds we will be able to go through all the eight rows of the display now, which is quite slow, but it gives us a look of what happens. I compile the code and it compiles without error, but now actually we have an increased memory usage. We are at 426 bytes of program memory and 129 bytes of data memory. This comes from the fact that our array here of constant values is stored first, of course, in the code memory because it has to be present all the time. But then it is, since it's a, a variable, a global variable, it's at runtime copied into the data memory. So we are taking up quite a bit of our data memory, 6.3% of our data memory. And the majority of this, actually 128 of 129 bytes, is this 16 by 8 array of binary, of, of 8-bit numbers here. But it compiled correctly, and uh, so I will um, flash it over into our microcontroller. But for that, I will actually give you the view of the microcontroller and its display here. And I press OK now, and here we see actually what could be a number 7. We see how it goes from row to row and displays whatever is in the font for the corresponding row. Uh, we can uh, compare this again with the design of the letter 7, uh, which is here. So if you keep this in mind now and compare it to how this looks, it looks like a number 7. So let's transition back and make one more short change to our code. I will include another global variable here. I will call it um, uint oops, uint 8 type character. And I will start with a zero in this variable. I will put the character variable here as well. Actually, I should, since I'm using it in an interrupt service routine, I will make it volatile. And uh, then in the main loop here, I will actually almost character plus plus I will increment it by one and then I want to I need to keep it in the range of 0 to 15 and I can do so by actually using the modular operator again with the constant value of 16 and uh, so this will actually now yeah it would very quickly go through the font much more quickly than we could see anything on the display so therefore I will add a delay as well give me a delay of 500 milliseconds here what else do I have to do well I have to speed up the display again by increasing the number of interrupts per second we go back to the divide by 8 prescaler which we used before compile the code, it succeeded, um, go back here, I transition you over here, I press the program button and now we see that our thing can count hexadecimal. So there, there seems to be a bug in the font um, if we look at the one, it looks a bit weird and it doesn't look as it's supposed to be looking according to the last page of the instructions. So he here we actually have a one like this. And uh, here we have the hex value 0x04, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1404040404. And if we look at uh, our code, that's exactly what's written here as well. But I made a mistake here. 
already because this turned on LED up here is not 0x04, it's 0x08. Because this one here, these LEDs here, this bit position is the 1, 2, 4, 8 position. So it should be 0x08, 18, 08, 08, 08, 08. Is this one here correct? We have a 1 and we have 8 plus 4, which is 12, which is hexadecimal C. That's correct. So we, the 4s have to be 8s in order to be correct. Let's change this, correct this. I will not print new instructions, but I will update the code on Studium at least. So recompile our code, transition, finding Avia Dures, pressing program here, and now we have a clear and clean number one. Wait, here it comes, looks much nicer. So the vertical bar was shifted one bit position to the right as compared as it should be. So this is the second part of the lab.